stage four, this is going to hurt. The morning of stage four, you could just feel the anticipation within camp. So everything is built into stage four. Okay, stage four is the long day. For us, it was over 85 kilometers in length. And everybody knows, no matter who you are, no matter how good you are, <laughs> it's, it's going to hurt. So even as we made our way to the start line and everything, there was nearly this kind of quiet anticipation and excitement of, of what was to come. So it started out like every other stage, highway to hell, and bang, straight into things. Um, we actually came across a little bit of civilization for the first time uh, since we had actually started. And one of the locals was giving out little flowers, uh, which was a really, really nice touch. Um, and it actually helped throughout the day then as well to be able to look down and to see that there and to know the people that you haven't even met have actually been rooting for you as well. It was a huge boost. The terrain on the day it was a lot of dry riverbeds, dunes, so many dunes. It was a little bit different because we actually had a storm. <laughs> so in the middle of the Sahara, one of the hottest places on the planet, and we got rain. Um, so <laughs> it's just one of those things. So um, the way the long day works as well is that the fastest 50 runners um, start about three hours later than everybody else. So it's kind of cool because we were coming over these dunes, uh, you know, we were about maybe three hours in or whatever at this point, and next thing all these elite runners start coming past us, you know. This is Rashid eating sand dunes for breakfast. Oh, so that was really cool. And they made it look so easy, so damn easy, and it was not. But about 33 kilometers in, we got to our next checkpoint. And everybody was pretty dehydrated at this point. Um, I had been rationing my water for the previous maybe 90 minutes, something like that. It was incredibly hot. There was no breeze out like there had been the day before. And I was in a really bad way. I was in a really bad way. So I essentially got into the checkpoint and I went into one of the little tents there that the Berbers had set up. And I lay down like... I mean, face first on the mat. Like, <laughs> forget about hygiene. I was just exhausted. I was overheated. I was dehydrated. Um, I ended up pulling up my t-shirt to try and bring down my body temperature. I was literally lying on the mat, just shivering. Um, and I lay there for about 30 minutes and people kept coming over to ask if I was okay and everything. And I was with my tent mate, Ben. We, we actually pretty much did all of Marathon de Sav together. It was it was hugely helpful, I think, for both of us. But especially for me on that day. Um, so look, about 30 minutes later then I got up. I actually got out my knife and I had to cut the calf sleeves off my legs. Because the sunstroke was still there from, from the day before. And it was causing so much heat and pain and everything else. And eventually then I just said, look, I have to try, I have to, I have to do this. And it was a very interesting turning point for me, actually, because when that thought came into my head, I kind of knew at that point that the only way I was going to be leaving the course was if they physically removed me. Um, thoughts up until that point had entered as to, you know, can I continue with this? Should I go to the medical tent? Do I need to be put on a drip? And that kind of thing. But I don't know, I, I've never reached a decision like that before where I knew that my body was going to keep going for as long as it could and I would physically have to be removed from the course um, in order to stop. And that was, that was a big thing for me. So anyway, look, I, I stood up, my body was still shivering at this point. And remember, we're at like 33, 34 degrees. Um... I stood up, my legs were shaking, picked off my bag and it felt like it weighed a hundred times more than I had that morning and I set out after Ben, um, my tent mate. So Ben was going much faster than I was and you know I encouraged him to go ahead and that kind of thing because you don't want to hold anybody back. So he moved on ahead and I was, I was just crawling behind him. Um, 
and there was these people passing me out that I'd seen at the checkpoint and you could tell by them like the way that they were looking at me and stuff some of them tried to engage in conversation you kind of knew that they were thinking oh she's this, this is it her race is over um and then we we started to move into the evening so it was like maybe 4 45 p.m something like that and I still felt like crap but the weirdest thing happened I started running um, and I kept running and I don't mean I was doing a desert shuffle I mean I was running I was doing sub seven minute kilometers with I don't know seven kilos on my back at this point um, and I kept running and just running and running and running and about 10 kilometers later I uh, I arrived into the next checkpoint and it was it was it was getting dark at this point um, and I actually met Ben so I caught up with him which was not uh, not something I had expected to happen but then the two of us launched into the night stage together so the way the night stage works is that they give you a glow stick to hang off your backpack but they also have glow stick markers every 500 meters and then you also have your little head torch on as well so we went out into the night and got to the next checkpoint and we kept on going so it was incredible because the entire night sky is open to you we saw some shooting stars um you know you were able to see mars clear as day all the other constellations as well it was pretty special and then i got some hallucinations um so one of the most vivid ones was there was these guys walking in front of us and i could see their head torches and that kind of thing but they were maybe like five six hundred meters in front of us and i saw a white tent on the left hand side and then a car actually drove up uh, picked up three out of the six guys that were there and then drove off again um, and I know that was a hallucination because the car didn't make any noise and when we got closer there was no tent there so I had a couple of other vivid hallucinations kind of like that as well uh, but I knew there were hallucinations you know but I can see definitely if you were there by yourself and um, you know if you were exhausted if you were dehydrated you know things could get pretty hairy pretty quickly you know um but look we kept going throughout the night uh totally wrecked i mean your, your brain just didn't have time to to think and you just had to eat when you could drink when you could um, and everything else that goes with that so we we came over this this final hill just as the sun was coming up and we saw camp in front of us it was still about maybe three kilometers away or something like that but we knew we were nearly there at that point and I mean like all I could think about was back at kilometre 33 when I was literally face down on a mat thinking how am I going to do another 52 kilometres and then you know 7am well 6am the following morning I'm, I'm there you know it was it was it was the most unusual experience I've never had anything like that before regardless of all the different mountains and that kind of thing that I've done I've never had an experience like that before so we got into camp straight to the tent there was no like excitement there was no celebration there was just this feeling of complete relief um that we had gotten in and we were the last to get in from the tent we were on the go for about 22 hours and got into the tent um everybody was just lying down dead like <laughs> just wanted to relax to to, to recover uh, then I made a trip to uh, the medical tent as well I had to get my legs seen too because obviously I still I still had effects of the sunstroke and all that, that period as well so that probably magnified everything I had been feeling as well so went in had to get those taken care of had to take care of my uh, blisters <laughs> as well and then back to the tent for some chill out time however uh, nature had a different idea so essentially we we're all just chilling in the tent relaxing and next thing this sand devil which is like a sand tornado bang through the tent <laughs> no rest day for us so it actually stole a couple of sleeping bags and a few pillows and that kind of thing it didn't touch the entire camp just certain tents within the camp and the Berbers, the guys who helped to set up camp and everything, they were like in a jeep and they were after this like straight away. They recovered the sleeping bags, the pillows, everything. These Berbers were 
something else. I mean, they were absolutely incredible. I cannot imagine doing Marathon Basel without these guys. Um, they were so helpful. And even though, you know, they spoke French, we spoke English, they, they could not have been more helpful. They were just incredible. So <laughs> that brings us to nearly the end of stage, stage four. So stage four lasts 36 hours, okay? And the way it works is when the last people are arriving into camp who have been on the go for over 30 hours now at this point, an announcement comes around and the entire camp comes out to cheer in these people. Um, it was actually a really emotional experience. It was incredible. It, it was just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You know, Patrick Bauer meets them, hugs them, all that kind of thing. And then we were rewarded later that evening with a can of Coke, which is probably <laughs> the nicest can of Coke I've ever had in my life. And a um, string quartet and opera singer for the night. <laughs> So that's what we went to sleep with and <laughs> yeah, yeah what, a, what a crazy experience, stage four, um, just nuts and I mean we weren't even finished, we still had another marathon to go, you know, so stage four. <laughs>